Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Lee and I'm a DIY electric skateboard builder. And today we're gonna to be talking about BMSs, which is short for battery management systems. So in front of me here, I have an almost finished flat battery pack for my friends, Evolve Gen 2. And I have four different BMSs here also. They're all slightly different. They all technically do the same thing, but we're gonna have a look at them all and I'll talk about the different features of them to you. So by the end of this video, you're gonna know what a BMS is. You're gonna know the differences between the different types of BMSs that you can buy. You're gonna know the difference between running them in charge only, which is bypassed or charge and discharge. And yeah, you're gonna know how to install one on a battery pack. So I don't know if this is gonna be a lengthy video, I hope not, but I'll throw some timestamps here for you so that you know where to go in the video if you're looking for just a specific part of it. But if you wanna watch the whole thing and you wanna learn a few things, then stick around guys, because we're gonna have some fun installing one of these BMSs on this pack right now. So what is a BMS? Well, a BMS is a battery management system. It controls the charge and the discharge of your battery. It also looks after it. It can detect high and low voltages in the cells. It can detect temperatures over or under temperature. It can provide short protection and also will keep an eye on the balance of your battery. And that is the individual voltages of each group of cells through your S count. And it will maintain the balance or it'll try to maintain the balance of those cells and some BMSs are smart enough that they won't let you charge or discharge if your battery is basically out of balance. So like I said I've got four batteries here, uh, four BMSs here sorry, they're all slightly different and they all go about what they're doing in, in a different way and you'll see the reason why as we go through it. So guys as I said you can use a BMS for charge and for discharge. Most people in the electric skateboarding world only use BMSs for charge. And there's a reason for that, and that's because if you use a BMS for discharge, it becomes quite a big bulky piece of equipment. As an example, this is a high current discharge BMS, and look at the size of it. It's a monster, right? And you can tell it's a discharge BMS because of these huge heat sinks on the FETs. There's lots of FETs on there, um, something like, I don't know, 10 FETs. Uh, and that's a big chunky BMS. Whereas this BMS, focus, whereas this BMS will be used for um, charge only because it's so little, it doesn't need to have big chunky FETs on it for the discharge because the discharge would bypass the BMS and that is tiny. And for electric skateboarding, really, mostly you want a small BMS because normally you want to fill your enclosure with as many cells as you can get and you want big chunky vesks in there. And so normally there's only a little bit of room left for the BMS. Now, obviously some people do run discharge BMSs in their e-skates and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. In my opinion, I would rather not have the BMS in the discharge chain, because a BMS, if it does encounter a problem, it will cut the discharge from your uh, from your battery, and that could be a problem because also the brakes or anything like that won't work, basically, just turn your vests off. Now, if you're going down a hill and your uh, BMS decides that there's a problem and it cuts the battery power, you're gonna be in trouble. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I would prefer to be stood on a big fireball with brakes for a few seconds, trying to desperately get out my bindings before the board goes on fire than the potential of not having any brakes. I would sacrifice my whole board uh, just to have the brakes and be able to stop. So I don't wire my BMSs for discharge. Some people do. Some people use a fuse instead, which is a better idea. I also don't do that, but that's probably a good idea for lots of people. But anyway, back to BMSs. Some BMSs, like this one, have a moderate discharge current with the FETs, uh, but also are not huge. This one's all right. This one's like a medium sized one. This one has a temperature sensor built in and that can monitor the temperature of your battery. So it can also look for that. This BMS, which happens to be the BMS that we're gonna be installing today, is a smart BMS. It's only 20 amps on the discharge, we won't be using the discharge, but it has a port for a Bluetooth module. It has um, ports for temperature sensors, which are these here, and it's just a good bit of kit. It connects to an app on your Android or your Apple, and you can monitor all of the cell voltages through that. So we're gonna be installing this BMS today. So guys, I've drawn a diagram for you about how these BMSs connect. 
and I'm going to be referencing that as we go along to make it a little bit easier to understand whilst we also talk about it in real life. So the first port is a B minus port focus. The B minus port. That's on every single BMS and that connects directly to the battery minus terminal. So it can be the terminal, it can be the battery minus lead, it can be either of those things, but that always connects to battery minus. The C minus is the charge minus port. Now that connects to the charge port minus, but that isn't always present on a BMS and I'll show you why in a minute. And that's because of this port, which is the P minus port focus. And that's because of this port, which is the P minus port. And that is the discharge port for the BMS. If you use the BMS in discharge mode. So the current would come from the B minus into the BMS and then it would come out of the P minus to your battery output terminals basically and that's the way the current would flow. Um, so that will be using the BMS in discharge mode. We won't be doing that, we'll be bypassing. So we'll be doing, we'll be taking our positive and negative of the battery straight off the battery terminals, therefore completely bypassing the BMS for discharge. But some BMSs have what's called a common charge discharge port. So that P minus, not only is it the discharge port, but it's also the charge port. So if you have a common port, a uh, common charge discharge port BMS, then you'd wire the charger minus to P minus. Get what I mean? But we don't, we have the three port version. So we'll just be wiring the B minus and the C minus to the battery. The other port that all BMSs have is this port, which is the JST port. And that is for the balance wiring harness. Now, each one of these wires is gonna to go to your battery pack. And depending on, depending on the size of the BMS and the size of your pack, depends on how many wires you have. So you'll see here, we have 13 wires because we have a 12S system. And you can actually see conveniently on this wiring harness that actually one's colored black, one's colored red. So it's gonna show you where they go on the battery. Pretty easy, the black goes to battery minus, the red goes to battery positive, and then each one of those leads goes in between each one of the battery cells. Sometimes the BMSs are not wired like that. This is a classic example. So you can always tell the wiring guide of the wiring harness on the underside. And you can see here that this doesn't have the first port of the JST doesn't go to the battery minus. It actually takes the battery minus from the battery minus port. And you can actually see an arrow here. Focus. You actually see an arrow here that's showing you that the, the battery minus on the JST or what would normally be on the JST is actually being taken from the battery minus port. Look at this one. So normally you wouldn't know. You could always have a look on the underside and it will tell you the wiring configuration for the JST port. Now, not all BMSs are the same, obviously, guys. I'm just showing you what I've got here. You do have to pay attention to the one you've got. Try and find the wiring diagram. Most BMSs provide us, in fact, all of them will, will provide a wiring diagram if you ask them and if it's not already on the sales page where you bought the BMS from. So like I said, we have a couple of extra ports on this BMS. We have this port. That is for the Bluetooth module, so we'll be able to talk to it with our phones. And we have this port and those are temperature sensors. So this BMS will be able to monitor the temperature of our pack, really handy feature. Okay then guys, let's get this thing installed on this battery. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the wiring harness, balance, let's call it the balance wiring harness to the BMS. I'm gonna lay it on my battery pack or near my battery pack to see how it's gonna go together. Now, I've told you guys that my battery is a 12S battery and this is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal and the battery goes from the negative it goes across and it does a zigzag pattern like that now that means that the cells are grouped in this is cell one this is cell two it goes across to here cell three cell four and all the way up to the end of the battery so we're going to look at how we're going to wire this uh, bms in now it's going to sit here at the end of the battery pack and i think the best way to do it is to run the wires along this side and and if we look at where they're going to go so the black wire will go here because this is the negative terminal and then we'll have a wire here two three four five six seven 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13 would be the positive terminal. So that's why the 13 lies on the harness. So I think that we're going to go, that's going to end up going like that for one. And then the next wire along is going to go to here, which will be two, three, will be here. And then four, five. So there are, there are going to be wires crossing. And that is totally fine if you do it in the correct way. And I'm going to show you how to do that as we go through building this pack. So I think it's time just to get to it. Let's wire this BMS up and uh, yeah, we'll talk about it as we go along. So when we talk about battery safety, we talk about fish paper. This stuff is amazing. It's anti-abrasive and also anti-heat. And it just makes a really good barrier for stuff that could potentially short. And the aim of the game when you're making a battery is to make sure nothing shorts. It's the worst thing that could happen to a battery. If any two connections that are connected to the battery in different places touch each other, you're gonna have a short. And this is a figure that I'm just going to make up, but I would suggest that 95% of battery fires are caused by these wires rubbing on each other. So we're going to run these in a way that is safe and that that doesn't happen. And the best way to do that is to run them parallel to each other. And we make sure there's fish paper between the leads and the battery. And also if they cross over, there's fish paper between the crossing points as well. Obviously each one of these batteries, the, the canister of the cell is a negative terminal. So if you have this connected to one group and it rubs on the cell of another group and goes through, it creates a short and it's gonna be a bad time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I know my wire path, so I'm going to cut some fish paper basically. Right, we've got a bit of fish paper on the battery now, so that's going to make a nice barrier for where we run our leads along it like that. Now the other thing you're going to need is captain tape. This stuff is um, sort of heat resistant and electrically resistant tape and we're going to use the captain tape to tape the leads to the fish paper. So first thing we're going to do guys is we're going to get the wiring harness in approximately the correct place looks like looks like that would do and you don't have to do this but I always do this I'm just going to take the leads down doesn't really matter how that looks at this time that can be taken off and probably will be taken off later and rejig but what we want to do is we just want to keep all the leads in a nice order and now I'm going to take the BMS back off because then none of these wires can short anything if it's not connected to the BMS while we're messing around with it. So we know that the black wire is going to go off to there, but we're not going to do that yet. But we can do this wire first, which is our first terminal. And we're going to attach it there. And there's already fish paper down underneath. I've already expected that I'm going to be running the wires this way. So what we can do is we can snip this to length, get it stripped and get it soldered. Now, one other good tip is with the terminals that you're going to solder onto is use a little bit of sandpaper and just give that nickel a bit of a roughing on the surface. It makes the solder stick so much better. Some solder on the terminal and then attach the two together. Right, once you've made a connection, it's a really good idea to get it taped down. It just adds a bit more rigidity to that loom as you go along and it just means that it's a bit safer. Nothing can short. What we need to do is take our next lead and you need to make sure as you're going through guys that you are collecting the right lead from the JST. They do want to cross, they cross all the time, it's super annoying. We will check it before we plug it in, but you just want to make sure, double check and then you can't be wrong. Now guys, one safety tip, if you've got long bits of solder, long wires, any metal, get it miles away from your battery pack. You want to keep everything small and under control. You do not want to short the battery. It would be a massive shame after all your hard work of putting it together if you messed it up in the final stages, right? 
Okay then guys, so we do have a situation, our first one, there's gonna be quite a few of them through this pack where the wires have to cross. I'm gonna show you how to do that safely. First of all, we're gonna tape this wire down with a bit of captain tape. And then what we're gonna do is gonna take our fish paper, we're gonna cut section off and we're gonna make a bridge for the rest of the wires to run over and then it won't be a problem. So I'll show you how to do that. Then with the barrier, we can run all of the wires across it. So I'm gonna take that down, get it all secured. We're gonna do the rest of the pack and I'll come back to you in a bit. Right, okay then guys, we've got all of those balance wires laid down apart from the negative terminal and the positive terminal one. And that's because I was a little bit sloppy and I haven't actually connected the wires, the main battery terminal wires yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those connected up and uh, then we'll be able to attach these last two and check the balance leads are all okay before we plug a BMS in and before we go any further. So yeah, I'm gonna go and attach those battery terminals and I'll come back to you guys in a minute. Right, okay then guys, we've got all of the balance wires now connected and I've put the terminals on the battery and it's looking really, really nice. Um, as I said earlier, I've just made sure none of the balance wires are crossed and there's fish paper between the balance wires and the cells. And then there's captain tape on top securing everything down so it can't move. And also I built it in a way that it can flex, the pack can, can flex along its length. You really don't want these balance leads on the underside and it flexing the balance leads underneath and pulling them out. If you run them on the top and it flexes, it's not so much of an issue. Anyway, we've got all of the balance leads done and we're gonna check it before we connect the BMS. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. First thing we need to do is we need to turn the pack over and we need to get ourselves a multimeter. This is a proper cheap five pound multimeter. That's what I use for most of my jobs. Does the job, you know what I mean? Uh, so we want to select DC volts. So there you go, I'm selected to DC volts, guys. And if you've got range, <coughs> a range selection on there, you want to be in the 0 to 20 volts region. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna volt check the pack. Now, obviously, if we measure between the black and the red wire, we're going to get full pack voltage. But if we measure between pack negative and the first white wire, that should be around 3.4 volts because all of these cells, cells are at storage charge. And if we go up, leaving the uh, negative multimeter wire on the black lead, and we go all the way up, we should increase by 3.4 volts at a time. So I'm gonna show you that I flip the pack over. So you need to be really careful because you could short cells together doing this. So you wanna be really careful. So let's go on the black wire. Let's just check, check the red wire. 41.2 volts or 41 volts. That's um, storage charge. So now we wanna go first red wire, 3.4. Next wire, 6.8. And as we check these, they should go up 3.4 volts at a time-ish. I said guys be really careful you don't want to short wires together there you go so we know that the pack is wired correctly the balance leads are wired correctly and what we can do is we can flip the pack back over and we can concentrate on the BMS now of course the JST connection the balance wires they're all connected up now so that one's done and we're not gonna be using the P- minus because we're not gonna be discharging through this BMS because this BMS, although it's quite chunky, can only do a 20 amp discharge. The reason why it's quite chunky is because it's a smart BMS. So um, we are basically gonna concentrate on the C- minus and the B-. minus. Now, remember I told you guys, the B- minus connects straight to the pack negative. So the B- minus is gonna go from here on the B minus port is gonna to connect to the B minus lead. The C minus is gonna go off to the charge port minus, and the C positive, charger positive, is gonna go directly to pack positive. So what we'll have in a minute is we'll have another XT, I'm gonna use an XT60, 
um, charge wire here. Uh, the negative will connect to the BMS C minus and the positive will connect to pack positive and we'll have a connection from B minus to pack negative. We'll put an XT90S on the end of this pack and we'll run the temperature leads and we'll put the smart Bluetooth HM10 module on and we'll get this pack heat shrunk up. Should be good to go. I'll show you the smart BMS app. By the way, guys, if you want to buy one of these BMSs, I have them available in my store. Follow the link in the description and you can get one of these smart BMSs by from my shop, support the channel. So we need to consider where we're gonna put everything now. So, so I think the B minus wire could come straight from the B minus port and hit this somewhere along here, wherever it makes sense. Yeah, let's get it done. Also, Mo, I've got your mug. Now guys, you can use whatever wire you want, whatever suits your application. I'm using 14 gauge for the charge circuit and this B minus circuit, that'll be plenty. Now with these, I always like to, to do the wire like this. So from the furthest port point away, it just put some, puts less strain on the wire. Right, let's get this soldered up. So I always make it too big and then sort it out afterwards and I'll show you what I do. Whew. Right, we've got a load of solder on there now and it's a solid connection. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna snip off the excess and leave it like that. There you go, so that's nice now. And we'll, we'll protect this, put a bit of fish paper over it later. Back to the pack, see where it's gonna go. And I think it'll connect nicely to the B minus there. Lovely. So I've just stripped off a little bit of wire there. I'm going to get it tinned. We'll get it connected up. Okay guys, we've got a really nice joint here, electrically and mechanically super strong. And now we're gonna heat shrink it up. If I can find some heat shrink tubing in the right size, I'm running a little bit low. You'll also notice I've got flags on the end of these wires and that's so that nothing can short out. So we get a bit of heat shrink tubing across that before it melts. So there is the B minus connected to the BMS. Now we've got to make a little charge wire that's going to go from the C minus and the battery positive to an XT60. So I'm going to put this flag back on, get an XT60. So guys, normally I would use an XT60, um, but the board that I'm doing this batch for actually has a Dean's connector on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace the wire that I took off the old pack onto here. Job done. Right, now all that's left to do is to plug in the BMS into the balance leads. And the BMS is technically wired, all the main connections are wired. So I'm just gonna go over them for you now and we'll just make sure that everything is okay. So C minus goes to the charge port minus, which it does. Charge positive goes to pack positive, which it does. B minus goes to battery minus, which it does. And the um, and the balance wire connection goes off to all the cells. So it should technically be good. Now, we've got a couple more connections to make. We've got to put the temperature sensors on. We've got to put the Bluetooth module on. I'll stick the Bluetooth module on now. And I should be able to connect to that with my phone. So we can have a look at it. Okay guys, so I have the app up and running and I'm gonna try and connect to this BMS. It's a bit funky on Android, uh, it doesn't always connect, but you on the iPhone version is really good. Um, blue light on the Bluetooth module should mean that we're gonna connect in and we'll be able to have a look. And the reason why it does, it's failed on my phone and the reason why it does that is because it's connected to a different BMS in the past and it's sort of paired with that one, I don't know. There we go, we're in, wasn't that hard. So the temperature is measuring minus 30 because we don't have any temperature sensors plugged in. 
But if we go to battery state, battery voltage, we can see all of our cell voltages, which is super handy. So we can check the balancing. Um, if I go back to dashboard, plug the temperature sensors in. We'll start getting readings from them. There we go, 26 degrees or 24 degrees. That's what, about what it is in here. So now it's time to get these temperature sensors ran into the pack in like areas that matter really for measuring temperature. Get it all neatened up, neatened up. Put an XT90S on the end, and job done. We can uh, we can shrink wrap the pack, shrink wrap the pack, and it's good to go. Now, guys, one other important thing to think about when you're running the temperature wise is you also do not want those crossing anything. So same rules apply. Fish paper, captain tape. All the good stuff. Obviously, apart from the temperature nib, the sensor nib, that needs to be touching the battery without any insulation underneath it, obviously, because it needs to register the temperature. Okay then guys, that is done. I just got the pack shrink wrapped up. All good, looking good. BMS is fully wired and that's how it's done guys. So this pack is going off to my friend Ricardo. So then guys, I hope you have a better understanding of how BMSs work. If you've got any questions, throw them in the comments. I try and answer every single comment that I see at least anyway. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. ish because these cells are at storage fault storage uh, we'll have another lead in a minute coming off here with the negative coming from the bms and the positive attached to attached the positive anyway we've got all the balance leads done <coughs> anyway <coughs> well oh Oh. But obviously every single wire which is connected to the positive of every cell after the pack negative, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? <laughs>